Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best. Uh, all right, so this is uh, the Citibank story part three. Uh, part one and two, the links are put down below. And uh, I, never <laughs> I never thought uh, you guys would be so interested to know the story. Uh, I mean, the response has been crazy. I've been getting messages and emails and comments. And uh, I just spoke from the heart. I, I didn't think... Uh, people would find it interesting. So, thank you is what I want to say is, uh, I really appreciate that uh, your feedback has been so positive. And uh, you know, it j just like uh, when you create something and it makes people happy, like when you cook food and you serve your family and your family is very happy and they thank you, you feel that sense of joy of creating something for someone who you care about. And uh, I do care about uh, the community that is genuine. Uh, I don't care about <laughs> idiots. <laughs> so thank you is what I wanted to say. And uh, yes, I'm pleasantly surprised that uh, so many of you found value in part one and uh, part two, even though it's one hour, I didn't think people would watch it. People have actually watched it right up to the end. So links are put down below if you want to see part one and part two. Now begins part three. And yes, they will, after this, there'll be a part four. I'm not too sure if there will be a part five and beyond because, you know, I'm not fabricating these stories, but remember I'm going 26 years ago. So, you know, it takes a little bit of recollection. So if I do feel there is something I missed, I'll make a part five. But as of now, it's part three. Okay, so part three is the Dome Cafe story. Uh, part four will be about Mariam, that girl. Okay, uh, yeah, I think I'm getting a part five, but I'll not announce it now. I just got one, okay. Yeah, yeah you know, these untold stories. Okay, anyway, part uh, three, let's go on with part three. Dome Cafe. So, um, like I told you, before I joined Citibank, I was, mm, mm, I'm starting to get part five and six and I'm getting, I'm getting, okay, let's, let's stick with part three. Sorry, just a little, going with the flow, you know. So, okay, so Dome, um, Before Citibank, I was working as a shopkeeper, as I told you. Shopkeeper, a home theater system, and assistant. I told you about that place where I was working. Uh, the guy was working for Emirates Airlines. He used to bring home theater systems uh, to a shop. He was a cabin crew, senior cabin crew member. He used to bring projectors, DVD players, amplifiers, speakers, sound system. And uh, the, these items were not available in Dubai, so, some of the foreign brands, and especially uh, at a second-hand price. So he could really put a markup and make money. At the same time, people who wanted brands like those days, uh, it was Denon, I don't know if they still make amplifiers and home theater systems and projectors. Denon, Sony, Onkyo, it was one Onkyo brand. Uh, Philips, uh, I think there was even a S Sanyo, I'm not too sure. Sanyo is a very old brand. Uh, so anyway, um, so all these brands were there, which he would bring second hand. And uh, 
you know he had i don't know whether he had a emailing list or whether he had uh, i think phone numbers people who are well off he was networked with all of them and these slightly upper middle class rich guys would come to the shop maybe in a week we i would have four or five people so the whole day i was free whole day i was free and uh, like i told you those days there was no facebook there was no google there was yahoo and the chat were chat rooms the um, like icq you can google search that yahoo chat groups msn hotmail uh, msn chat that was a big thing so you know i was just 20 years old and just got introduced to the internet bloody hell that also is another story how i got introduced my first my first ever email which i so fondly remember okay you you laugh if i tell you what was the handle it was hotmail i didn't know there was anything called email okay uh and uh, this guy comes in and gives me my first email he he was a uh, he was passing by young guy his name is amit i'll not give you his full name because i didn't ask his permission he was few years elder to me so one day this young guy comes in and i'm looking at him and he's like hi uh, so i show him the shop okay uh i'm by the way moving a little bit away from the story but i thought this would be nice to share so he comes in he's a young guy he's looking around okay what are the projectors okay this is speakers this is this this is oh flat screen we used to also sell flat screen tvs not flat screen like those big ass tvs uh, big inches and all that okay fine whatever so then uh, so he asked me about me he was very kind he was very nice and uh, later on he said uh, uh, so what are you doing at the weekend he just asked me i said nothing i'm in the shop i just work he said would you like to come with us for bowling bowling you know um so i said uh, i don't know how to bowl he said don't worry will i will share with you how to bowl and all that okay and that is where he told me okay uh, what is your email so i don't know what what, what what's an email saying you know you can get a message if i want to send you a letter or message i said uh, i don't have you know i thought it you have to pay pay money i said I don't have money for an email no 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 it is free oh it's free oh okay so uh, can i also have a email <laughs> so i remember asking he say yeah 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 you can come and remember those days it was not the broadband connection that we have today where you can download a whole movie or something those days it was dial up dial up is like uh, for those of you who do not know dial up is you know the uh, phone remember this is uh, mobile phones just got introduced so we are not even aware of Uh, a mobile phone i had my first phone that was alcatel which had a kind of yellow display like a calculator it had tee 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 when you press the button and it had a rubberized antenna so apple had not yet come out with its phone that time can you imagine that alcatel okay so <laughs> this is bringing back so many memories man okay so the phones that we had they're not wireless the phones that we had were with the cord you know a curly curly cord and connected to a cable so those are the telephones those of you who are in uae would know uh, the service provider called etisalat which is still there there was only one so we had a etisalat phone and it was connected to the internet which was dial up dial up modem i think it was 56 kbps kilobytes per second or something so if you're using the internet you can't use the phone okay it'll give you this shrill noise like yeah you can google uh, check on youtube how the dial up modem used to sound like connecting to a phone like some, some technological olden day i don't know how to say it you know 
Okay, so he told me we'll connect to the internet. I said, okay, you have to put in the username and password, which the owner had given me. And uh, we connected. Then he went to this browser. It was Internet Explorer. Microsoft used to allow Internet Explorer with its software, which was pirated anyway. So went to Internet Explorer and he went to uh, Hotmail. Okay. In Hotmail, he created, he asked me, okay, what name do you want? So I was like, uh, what name? Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Loy, Loy at Hotmail.com. So he put Loy, it was taken. He said, Loy is already taken. He told me, Loy Anthony, because my full name is Loy Anthony Macedo. Uh, but I, those days, in my 20s, I used to only use Loy. I used to never use Macedo and all that. So I said, Loy, he said, you want Loy, one, two, three? No, 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 I said. Then suddenly I came out, suddenly, that very time, I said, Loy the boy. Seriously, I said, Loy the boy at hotmail.com. He's saying, you want Loy the boy? I said, yeah, 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 I like Loy the boy. Okay. So my first email address, and when he checked, you know, I got Loy the boy. So I was very happy to know Loy the boy at hotmail.com. By the way, uh, even if you send now, it's no longer in use. I tried to reclaim it, which I did get, but then I was not using it. So just let it go. So that time it was Loy the boy at hotmail.com. So he said, okay, so you can use it. So after he created, I was very happy. I got the welcome message. So I said, oh, I got an email. He said, yeah, 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 check, check. So then I asked him, okay, now what do I do? He's saying nothing, you check every day and uh, I will send you a message about the uh, about the bowling and then you can come for bowling okay i said yeah yeah that's great yeah so i was very excited very happy and i'll i'll tell you i was so excited after he left i connected again to the internet to see if anyone sent me a message <laughs> nobody sent me anything every hour i kept checking anyone sent me anything there was nothing i was like why is nobody sending me anything and obviously, who would I send an email to? I didn't know anyone's email address. So, after he created, I thanked him for it profusely. Amit, uh, I did get in touch with him later on. He's doing pretty well off for himself. He was one of those outliers. Uh, he's a consultant today, financial consultant, doing very well. So, so my email, loytheboy at hotmail.com was created. And now, uh, I'm waiting for an email. So, first day, kept checking, nothing is happening. Second day, I checked, nothing. I think it was on day three or something, he sent a message. Uh, okay, we'll be meeting so and so. I was so happy, message, and I was wondering like, what do I, <laughs> what do I do? Because he sent me a message, I want to send him a message back. I didn't know there was anything like compose or reply. I was like, okay, now what do I do? How do I like tell him? So what I did is, he sent me an email. Huh? I called him. Yeah, I received your email. Ah, very good, very good. Okay, he said, yeah, in that email, I said, no, you can confirm. Yeah, I'm confirming. Ah, okay, okay, fine. He didn't understand that I didn't know how to send an email. So, <laughs> so what happened is uh, later on, I don't know, it, it was him or whom, whomsoever, I found out that you can, when you receive an email, you can reply. And yes, you can uh, also send emails, compose. I didn't know all these things. So I was very happy. Oh, email you can send. Okay, so anyway, that bowling story is, uh, I don't think it's so important, but uh, I did uh, enjoy the email. Now. So that was my life, that was my life in that shop, living a very simple life, being a simpleton. And yes, I did have goals, uh, I did have deep down somewhere in the heart, uh, one day I want to become something, but obviously I didn't think much about it. 
because I was busy enjoying my life, earning a salary. By the way, my salary was 1,200 dirhams. Yeah, 1,200 or 1,300 dirhams. You can check AED to USD. 1,200 dirhams a month uh, is around, I think, 300 or 400 dollars uh, a month. But it's it wasn't a big deal because, you know, whole day I was sitting down and watching DVD movies. He used to bring uh, DVDs of different regions. I was busy watching all of them. And I was enjoying myself. Okay. So, now where does this dome cafe story come in? So, the area where I used to stay, it was Karama. It was called Karama. And after you cross a certain point, from Karama, a street begins, its name is Bird Dubai. Okay? So, in Karama is all, you know, middle class families stay there. Filipinos, Indians, Pakistanis. And there are these, uh, you know, average priced restaurants. There are some slightly uh, upbeat restaurants, which are slightly uh, more expensive. But, uh, you know, these are restaurants you can afford to eat once a week, at least. With my income, I couldn't afford that. But once a week or once in two weeks, I could afford to eat something. It, it's like, uh, uh, I don't know how to put it in terms of... Uh, okay, to give you a perspective. If I would go to a cheap Kerlite restaurant, or they say Malbari restaurant. Malbari is a term used for... Uh, South Indian Kerlite Muslims who I think are near the coastal region. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so, you know, there if I could eat for 10 to 15 bucks, okay, uh, maybe 2 to 3 dollars, uh, I could eat like uh, a oily Indian roti, it's called a parota, and a few pieces of chicken and gravy at the side for 15 bucks or 10 bucks those days it was even like two dollars if i'd go and dine in these restaurants it would cost me just for a plate of chicken it would cost me 20 bucks plus the oily roti or indian bread would cost me say three bucks so it was three times more the cost Okay, and uh, obviously if you had to eat for a full stomach, uh, where it would cost me 10 bucks to eat in a cheap cafeteria, uh, it would cost me like 50 or 80 bucks. So it was slightly higher. Okay. So after Karama, there was this place which was called Burjman Shopping Center. Okay. It was the first ever kind of shopping mall, so to speak. It had a olden one, not the new refurbished, rebuilt one. Uh, and it was only one single unit. Uh, it had, I think, one, two, it had three floors. Uh, two floors? One, can't even remember. Uh, yeah, sorry. It had ground floor, uh, first floor, second floor. And the second floor where was where the food court was, the arcade games were, okay? So that, uh, why I used to go there was just to play a few arcade games once a while, where I could play two or three games, because that's all I could afford. But most of the people who were going to the shopping malls were rich, okay? You're talking of 26 years ago. The only other shopping mall which was there was Al Gurair, which was in Dera, which was relatively far. For me at least, I didn't have a driver's license or a car or anything. Remember, I'm still a poor guy. So when I was to go to this Bajman shopping mall, below the mall was this cafe shop. It's like a premium version of Starbucks. Okay, Dome Cafe. I remember the name. I don't know if that cafe is still there. The brand was still there when I left UAE around 10, how many years? Six? Ten years ago? Yeah. So Dome Cafe. It was a very premium brand. And uh, 
not super expensive but obviously you know like remember what i told you 10 bucks i could get food uh if i went to a slightly upbeat place in karama it would cost me five times more here the coffee itself <laughs> the coffee itself was i think uh, 20 bucks so just a coffee so i didn't know it at that time but i used to stand outside the coffee shop and see this big board dome cafe i don't know if you can google search on ua uh, google uh, just type dome cafe ua you'll see the branding it has a very starbucks kind of a look okay but it's slightly more premium now nowadays people can you know obviously people can afford more so but those days only whites used to go there the whites or emiratis the really rich people so me with my simple clothes i used to go young boy long hair i used to stand outside and look at this dome cafe and i used to see the light shining you know from inside outside and i used to see all these well dressed people eating and nice i just stand outside and look and i used to smile i say wow these rich people and this dome cafe wow you know i was like one day i'll go to this cafe one day i'll go and have one coffee there because you know i couldn't afford and i really wanted to go inside just to you know check but just understand this there was nobody to tell me nobody to coach me nobody to guide me i didn't feel i was worthy enough because obviously I was poor, I, I didn't have money, I was hardly earning 200, 300 dollars. So I would just stand and smile and look, year to year. And I would see these guys well dressed, the waiters, even the waiters and the chef and all that and the croissant and all that kept there. I used to look, wow, I wonder what is all that. Okay. So I used to always pass by and just look, standing outside the window, dome cafe and all. Mm, as to feel very happy. All right. It was my dream huh, to go and have coffee there. That was my dream. And I felt if one day I can go there, means I'm rich. Okay. So, in other words, the day I become rich, I'll go to Dome Cafe. Now, here's a funny bit. You saw no, in part one and part two, I finally got into Citibank. So from the 1,200 bucks salary, suddenly now I was earning 2,500, which was basic, and 500 bucks, which are allowance, so 3,000 bucks. So 3,000 bucks, and my office, uh, here's the funny thing. Here's the olden days, it was 26 years ago, Burjuman, the shopping mall, Next to that was Citibank. It had a very unusual shaped building. For those of you who have been in Dubai would know that. It had a very unusual shape, blue colored, very premium look. Because Citibank was only for the affluent, wealthy people. And then after that was one building, uh, one building. And the next building was where the Citibank sales staff would be there. We were under the, uh, we wouldn't get the visa of Citibank. We would get uh, the local, agency uh, or the company that represented Citibank, Arcadia Marketing. I still remember. I don't know if that company is still there. So my visa, my work visa was part of Arcadia Marketing and we used to go there. So it was hardly a few blocks away. Okay. Walking distance. So once I started to work there, then obviously, you know, new life and all that. And I was very happy that Burjman was nearby. I could go to play the arcade games and all that. But it didn't strike me that now I could go to Dome Cafe. So one day I went to the arcade, you know, there was a food court at the top. And then one day when I, I stepped out, I stepped out of the mall. And, you know, normally I used to go from the back entrance because that was where it was easier. But this time when I went out of the mall, right in the front, lo and behold, there on the, I think it was the right hand side, was Dome Cafe. You could see it. And I was like, wow, Dome Cafe. And, you know, I was wearing a shirt and tie and 
I look like an executive and I was like, maybe today I can go to Dome Cafe. Because, you know, obviously I saw many people there, but they all were dressed up in suits and all that. So I was kind of nervous. I was like, can I also go there, you know, dressed up like this? So I was not too sure. I was not too sure whether, you know, I could go inside. And So as I stood there, you know, a couple came out. I can see the door. And one of the waiters opened the door and they went out. And lo, I'm standing there and the guys opened the door. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden this guy says, welcome. So I was like, uh, like, you know, for a minute, I wanted to turn back and see, like, is he talking to somebody else? So I just like, look like this and <laughs> I just look like this just to make, uh, you know, just to see, is he talking to someone else? I don't know whether he uh, found it obvious. I was like, ah, yeah, yeah. So uh, he opened the door, so I went in, went in and there you can hear this, like, you know, jazz music playing and the ambience was so different outside the traffic noise and all that and inside there is like you know just jazz music and quiet and and you know you can hear the clink clank of people having uh, food and all that so I was not too sure what to do I really didn't know what to do I can see the croissants there I can see the coffee so this guy said sir uh, please have a seat I, I said yeah I'm just looking I said, yeah, sure, sure. And he went off and I was standing there. I didn't know where to go, what to do. I was even nervous to look at the menu. I was even afraid to ask. I didn't even know that you should ask the menu. So I went in, I looked around there on the, you know, they have on the wall, no? With a blackboard and they write some stuff. So I saw the prizes and I couldn't understand what they had written there because until then, I only knew there's something called tea and coffee. I didn't know what is a cappuccino, I didn't know what is a latte, I didn't know what is, you know, mochiato and espresso. I saw all these strange names. I was like, I was just totally lost. And then they obviously have today's special of the day and then they had croissant. So I was like, uh... And once again, then... <laughs> this is another waiter. I think he slightly tall, well-built. So he says, sir, uh, what would you like to order? Uh, once again, I told him, just looking, just just looking and seeing. So he said, uh, are the special of the day, something he told me. I don't know, it was shepherd's pie or something, I don't know what. So I looked and finally I told him, okay, I'll, I'll come back later, okay? He said, sure, sure, okay. He went and I didn't understand what to do, I went out. I went out and I was like, whoa, I actually, you know, I was telling my, I actually went in Dome Cafe. Wow. I was like, hmm. I was so recharged. I was like in a state of shock. I remember going home and next day, next day after I woke up, I was like, today again, I'll go Dome Cafe. I'll go again and uh, I will order something. <laughs> so the following day, before going there, I checked. Hmm, look smart, look everything. Okay. <clears throat> and <laughs> I practiced in front of the mirror. Uh, excuse me, I like a coffee. I was practicing in front of the mirror. Now here comes the comedy part. Huh? So I like coffee. Yeah. I was, you know, trying to be sophisticated. I made sure there was money in my wallet. We had got a free credit card. So took my wallet, went there. Once again, went inside. Hmm. He opened, one other guy opened the door or something. And I was looking where to sit. So he said, sir, would you like to have a seat? Yeah, 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 sure, sure. I went and sat down. And there on the table, wooden table, wooden chair, heavy, yeah. And then I saw something on the desk. He, you know, they put uh, the special of the day and all that. And he came and got me the menu. Okay. And uh, yeah, and I opened the menu and I was... I think it was a paper menu or something, not too sure. So I couldn't understand head or tail of what was written there. I was just like, coffee, where's coffee? 
coffee is here and what is all this and then there were these italian i i didn't know there was i didn't know what was like you know uh pasta and you know with mushrooms and this and that and chicken with white sauce and it's like what the hell is all this but obviously i didn't want to show him that i didn't know anything i was like mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. and i was checking breakfast breakfast egg scrambled this i was like oh egg but then i saw the price like i think it was uh, nearly uh 27 or i was like oh what bloody egg is this i was like mm egg sausages are so expensive i can eat one full month of eggs and all i was like this is stupid uh, so i was searching for the coffee finally i got the coffee okay got the coffee <laughs> got the coffee and uh, when that guy came sir uh, have you decided what you would like to have so finally i told him um, okay uh, i would like coffee and he suddenly i remember if i remember vaguely he told me sir would you like a cappuccino instead a cappuccino with something how you <laughs> so he kind of asked me would you like you know cappuccino and so i was like uh, i don't know what is this cappuccino thing yeah 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 sure sure you you can give me a cappuccino so then he said uh, what uh, would you like a side dish and i said no that, that's that's all so finally waiting 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 he bought me a large cup like you know i never seen a cup like that like normally you know we drink in glass typical indian style coffee big cup came and it was written dome cafe and i was very who oh, was like oh, this is very big yeah and i could see like milk and frothy and you know nice little design at the top I was very happy. Ooh, this is so nice, yeah. And <laughs> and then he gave me. Uh, there were two biscuits at the side, you know, walnut biscuit. So I was like, uh, the I was like worried. I was like, bloody hell, this this coffee thing is so big, and maybe it's expensive. Why is he giving me biscuit? I I have to pay for it. I didn't know it was complimentary. So so I told him, uh, sorry, uh, the. biscuit i didn't order because i was afraid like he he would charge me he said no sir that's complimentary i was like oh really so are you oh doggy ah uh. ah uh, yes 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 ah uh, ah uh, ah uh. yes 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 mm. <laughs> doggies okay i like these doggies cute very furry okay So he said uh, sir if you don't want I can take it uh, I can take it back See the minute he said it's free complimentary and then he was about to take it back I was like no way man you give me free No no I said no 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 keep 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 uh, I I I like the biscuit I you know is very happy with free biscuit okay So you know I saw the coffee I saw the thing and uh, I was very happy okay I took the biscuit <laughs> I was dunking it in and I didn't know that the cappuccino you have to put sugar by yourself. I tell you it is bitter. I was like mm, this coffee is what no sugar nothing. So then I didn't even know the sugar was kept there. I was so dumb. I told him uh, excuse me sir there's no sugar <laughs> in my cappuccino. Yes sir there's no sugar. Here you can, you know, brown sugar, whatever you can help yourself. Ah, okay, okay. He must have thought I was some dumb, dumb fuck, or he must have thought maybe I was joking. I don't know what. So I was very happy. I put the sugar, had that one biscuit, and there was, you know, it's very small. And the second one was there, and uh, this time I dunked it. Okay, but then I was like, I like the biscuit so much. I was like, sheesh, man, they give only two biscuits. What is this? I wish I could have more. Okay, I'll tell you why that is also important. So I had the coffee. Coffee was strong, oof, and tasted nice. I was like, hmm, this tastes very nice, yeah. Uh, so I enjoyed the coffee. I drank everything. So I was very happy. Okay, obviously, then I asked for the bill, and uh, you know, felt good about it. And uh, I was like, yeah, thank you. Okay, bye, whatever. Okay. 
Um, by the way, there were some coins there. I didn't know you should leave a tip. I took everything and went. Okay. Next, uh, next day, I thought I'll come again. Okay. And this time I thought, okay, I had that big coffee with milk, whatever, some name he gave. I will try something else. So this time I went again. Uh, he remembered me. Welcome, sir, whatever. Remember, no tattoos, just normal. So when he saw me, he you know, gave me a seat. I sat in the same place. And this time I told him, uh, I'll try something to eat this time. He said, yes, sir, what would you like? Obviously, I don't know. No? So I, I said, what is good? What is good? He said, sir, this is a chef's special. Once again, nothing made sense because there was pasta, this, that. So, finally, I told him, okay, I'll think about it. I didn't know what to eat. I was looking around and there I saw one guy having, it was a large bread. Okay, I'll give you the name, what it was. But this is what I saw. Large bread, yellow, and uh, he is pouring some liquid on top, thick liquid, looked like honey. I was like, that looks very nice. Hmm, okay. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. So I called that guy. He said, yes sir, so have you decided what you'll eat? So I said, yeah, uh, yeah. What, what is that guy having? So he said, sir, that is French toast. Ah, I'll have French toast. Okay, now, mind you, I don't know what that is. Okay, so he, or maybe, you know, it was like I didn't know the term and all that. So finally, okay, he went in. He came out after some time and he got me. And yes, I did order coffee, I remember that. The same coffee I ordered yesterday. So I told him yesterday you gave me, you know, say yeah, cappuccino, sir. Yeah, 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 same. Okay, and this time I was very eagerly waiting for my free biscuit. So the French toast came large one and I was like, oh, this looks like an omelette. <laughs> so it is actually, you know, French toast is bread dipped in egg and it was not a typical slices, it was a thick bread. And it was maple syrup. I thought it was honey. So I was busy watching that guy, what that guy was doing. So I was like, mm, I'll copy the same thing. So even I put maple syrup and I ate it. It was sweet and kind of enjoyed it. So that was my second experience. Very soon, I started to get confident whereby I would go there and I made it a point every day to eat something different. I tried pasta with white sauce and mushroom and chicken. I like that very much just to prepare it very well. Uh, then I discovered something called lasagna. Then I discovered different kind of pastas were there. In fact, uh, I started to get so comfortable that uh, one day I even picked up the courage to ask him, you know, the complimentary biscuits, no? I one day even asked him, I said, uh, you know, that biscuit you gave me, can you give me some more? Like, imagine it took me a courage of nearly, I think two weeks, three weeks, or nearly a month to literally pick up the courage and say, can I have one more biscuit? Then I tasted all the muffins, I tasted the croissant, I like the almond croissant. Then I discovered there's something chocolate croissant. I didn't know it was croissant. As a croissant. <laughs> oh goodness. Then obviously the various coffees, I tried it. You know, see, uh, you might find it a little silly me sharing all this. It might sound like, you know, what the hell, you, you know, you've never seen coffee in your life. Or, the, it's, I, I think you'll understand when I tell you this. For someone like me who came from a very simple background, who, who, who lived in, I wouldn't say poverty, but a very simple life. This, what we used to see was, wow, luxury. You know, it was like, uh, I never knew there was anything like global brands. I was even afraid, afraid, huh? 
to go into like i told you, you know i went to the shopping mall there were like brands like adidas nike i was afraid to go inside these shops forget the rolex forget the uh luxury brands that i would just stand out and look and look at the prices and i was like oh all expensive here however as my courage started to build up i said to myself why don't i go inside the shop what is there other people are going there they are wearing clothes i'll also go there and uh, i picked up the courage to go inside these shops guess what i learned the hard way that it's not louis it's not louis vuitton it's louis vuitton <laughs> Oh, I took one girl and I went there and I was acting sophisticated and I was seeing all these rich people checking out the bags and purses and I went and so the guy asked me so what uh, how may I help you and I said I want a Louis Vuitton Louis Vuitton this is even before Russell Peter made that joke I actually said that because I I didn't know like it's Louis Vuitton or whatever however you pronounce it So <laughs> the minute the guy heard Louis Vuitton he was like so you mean Louis Vuitton so I was like oh yeah, yeah that then at home I was practicing Louis Vuitton Louis Vuitton you know with my indian accent what i would say <sighs> so i picked up the courage even to go to a, a shop selling rolex watches i was so nervous so worried i was afraid that maybe they'll throw me out but when i walked in they didn't throw me out they said morning sir whatever afternoon or oh can we help you i said no i'm just looking fine sir and then it took me i think another few more months to actually pick up the courage and say can i see the watch because i was afraid if i would say can i see the watch he would ask me do you have money but they were not rude so slow by slow my confidence started to build up but this is where uh, you would say things took a slightly stupid turn not ugly turn stupid turn because i started to buy expensive perfumes i told you know i spent 1500 us dollars only on perfumes paco rabon givenchy then uh, gucci uh versace uh, the reason i was buying that because i was always buy cheap perfumes which are not branded just a spritz i didn't even know how to spray i had to spray outside of my clothes i didn't know where you have to spray i didn't know how that i learned from my you know girlfriends or whatever <laughs> i didn't know where you have to spray i didn't even know grooming was a thing i learned it the tough way because there was nobody to teach me man so hmm, it's quite a life and uh, I think over the period of time that I stayed in worked in city bank I made it a point to go to every outlet every uh you know retail outlet I made it a point to ask what is the cost of this and I think uh, my confidence you will find this really funny if I say this my actual confidence got boosted the day I could ask for a shoe like Nike shoe or Adidas shoe or I said I want to try it and do I didn't know that you could try it. So I used to always think you have to pay money, and then only you can see the shoe. So I picked up the courage to ask them, "Can I try the shoe?" Ah! Hmm. <sighs> From that day onwards, I would keep going to every restaurant, every outlet, check the price, buy stuff. Yes, I did waste money, and yes, I did blow on the credit card because I didn't know how to. Use. What was the credit card? I thought it was free money. I didn't know you had to pay interest. And yes, I also purchased my first computer, which was a big thing. I never thought I could buy a computer. You know the typical Pentium. For those who are youngsters, will not know what is a Pentium. It's a. I think it was a five one twelve. I could play video games. Those days, the video games were Unreal, uh, Quake. You can Google search these. Uh, gamers would know what they are. Age of Empires. <laughs> I was even stupid enough to 
by the originals. Because I was rich, no? I didn't know. Uh, I found out later, you can download it, pirated versions from something called Kaza and Napster, uh, music and all that. Anyway, this is before smartphones were ever invented. We had CD players. Hmm. I even got myself a CD player. Hmm. CD player, can you imagine? It's a CD with music. You know, when I look back at my life, the simple guy that I was, the ignorance, the immaturity, the, the insecurity is a fear. Just imagine, because, you know, my mother, father, nobody was there to guide me. Stepfather, my relatives, we didn't know what is all. In fact, I didn't even know how to eat with a uh, fork and knife. I didn't know. Oh, you should have seen how I street. Clang, clink, clang, clink. <laughs> you know, a fork and knife. You know, I'm, I'm just a simple, like you could say, village idiot from India who has lived a Dubai life. We don't know how to eat with fork and knife and or fork and spoon or. So we, like, I would just, just, just imagine how a normal person who has never used a fork and knife would use. I would use spoon like this and fork, I would try to, you know, and sometimes when nobody is looking, I'd look left and right and then use my fingers and just cut with the butter knife. I have to wonder why the butter knife is not sharp. <laughs> so, that's life, man. I didn't know, uh, like, you know, people, when they would wear office clothes, they would have their tie and they would put the handkerchief here, no? I used to see them, I used to wonder, why is he putting the handkerchief? So then I was like, hmm, okay, I'll copy that also. I was like, <laughs> put the handkerchief here and... Without knowing what was the reason I was doing it. I thought I was sophisticated. Hmm. It was like a, this small boy who is seeing life for the first time. By the way, I purchased a T-I-S-S-O-T, -S -S I don't know, how do you pronounce that? Bought a Tissot watch that looked like a Rolex. I bought, a, I think, a $500 or $500 or $700 Prada glasses. Oh, I was spending money like mad, yeah. No value for money. But I was living a simple life but showing off. <laughs> but yeah, that shaped me for who I am today, you know. All those experiences. But I'll tell you, I'll never forget that dome cafe moment where I thought it was a big deal having coffee there where the rich people would have I thought it was a big deal eating in such expensive joints because I was born and raised poor no in fact I'll even share maybe a story later on when I went to Burj Al Arab that so-called seven star which is actually a five star the premium hotel oh that is the height of my village idiot immaturity. That is another story which I'll share. Going to a five-star hotel for the first time and trying to act sophisticated. <laughs> but the reason why I'm sharing this story, this, this story, this dome cafe, is to tell you that, you know, if, if you're poor and you see rich people eating or rich places, there's always that fascination, oh, one day I'll go there, one day I'll do this, one day I'll do that. Yes, the experience is different. But it's not uh, such a big deal, man. And in hindsight, today when I look, yes, it's a good life. Yes, it's premium. Yes, it's delicious. Yes, when you go to a five-star hotel, yes, you will experience luxury. But here's the funny thing. Today, when I have the money to go to any VIP restaurant, any five-star outlet. I can literally buy anything. Maybe because I had enough and more. Today I eat simple food, man. It's so funny, so ironic. You know, people who don't have, when they don't have money, they want to do everything rich people do. But people, once they are rich, they want to go back to their roots and live simple. That's my story today. I'm eating simple food, simple rice, simple whatever. And I like to eat at home. 
I don't want to eat out unless there is something really delicious. So this is where my life is at today. So this was the Dome Cafe story. From that email, Loy the Boy at Hotmail dot com to uh, <laughs> ordering the various kinds of coffees, having the courage to go to a five star hotel, having the courage to ask for uh, like the price. You know, just imagine having the audacity to even enter a premium brand like Rolex watches and all. Just so afraid I was, and. Having the courage to say, "Can I try that shoes?" Because I was seeing other people try on the shoes, Nike and Adidas, and I never had brands like that. Never wore shoes like that. Hmm. I didn't even know what is a cappuccino. I didn't know what are the various espresso macchiato. We had no internet. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what is what do you call French toast. I didn't know that pasta. I used to call it noodles. Noodle. Oh yes, and uh, it nearly took me nearly, I think, six months or a few months to pick up the courage to actually ask for a free biscuit. You know, just imagine that was me once upon a time. Anyway, this is part three of that Citibank story. Thanks to Citibank and its salary, I was able to fulfil this. Dream and eat where rich people eat. Hmm. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the journey that I took you on. Because the next video, that is, depends if you still want to hear, part four will be the Mariam story, that girl whose ah, whose life I destroyed, which to this date, if there was any. The regret that I have for any relationship, it would be that the Mariam story. Hmm. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Yeah, and uh, do comment below if you know which part of the story really stood out. Did you watch the whole video? And yes, are you interested to know the part four, the Mariam story? I'll share that with you and. I already have part five lined up, so let's see if your interest remains. I'll share. If you guys are getting bored, then what's the point? Okay. Good, bad, ugly. Comment down below. You guys take care and thank you. Thank you for you know letting me know your thoughts. It makes me happy to know you enjoy knowing these stories of my life. All right. Take care.